Hello and welcome my dear students to my channel Mathematics Made Easy. Today we are on part 2 of end of term coverage for grade 10 elite and in today's session we are going to be going deeper into calculus and looking at derivatives of exponential logarithmic and trigonometric functions. So we are going to be covering from page 183 questions 31 to 47. You must watch the video till the end because it's a very useful video taken from the important questions that are going to come for your term 3 end of term exams. So give it a thumbs up if you like it and if you find it useful and share with your friends those who are going to give the exam on 13th of July. So first we have a formula sheet. This is the formula sheet for derivatives of the 6 trigonometric function. So if you get sine, cos, tan, cot, secant or cosecant in the question and you need to differentiate it then the formula is that d by dx of sine x is cos x and as you see conversely d by dx of cos x is minus sine x so i'll tell you a pattern here the pattern is if you observe carefully when it is the trigonometric ratio starting from c that is cos cot and cosecant then the derivative has negative sign as you see so it has negative sign and it gives negative sin x, negative cosecant square x, negative cosecant x cot x as the result. Now there is another pattern that you can notice here. The pattern is that when it is sine, its derivative is cos and when it is cos, the derivative is sine with a negative sign. Again, the pattern is if it is tan, it is secant square. If it is its reciprocal cot, it is uh, negative cosecant square. So there's a pattern that you observe that will help you to remember the formula. Similarly, when it is secant uh, and its derivative is secant x plus tan uh, multiplied with tan x and for d by dx of cosecant it is minus of cosecant x with cot x. So please learn this so that you can use it in the questions for solving. Let's see what kind of questions to expect. There can also be questions where you have a exponential or logarithmic function. For example, uh, the first one I'm highlighting here is for uh, for d by dx of a to the power x. So if you have any base to the power x, then its uh, derivative would be the same base to the power x times natural log of a. So the base is very, very important here. Next is the derivative of e to the power x. So remember, exponential function always has the same derivative. So d by dx does not affect e to the power x. It is e to the power x only. Then derivative of logarithmic function is d by dx of ln x, which is log x, natural log x. It is 1 over x. So these are again some formula sheets that we'll be using today in the solving of the questions for the end of term exam. As per your end of term document that has come by the ministry, questions number 31 to 47 are very very important. So we are going to be solving some questions from here. We'll do 31, 33, then we'll take 38, then we'll take 42 and 47. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These five questions we are going to be covering in today's session. Stay glued to the channel. Also, we'll pick up one more because all of these are important questions. Let's solve them one by one. So begin with 31 and 33. Okay, so let's solve question 31 and 33 one by one. So first we do 31 here and then we move to 33. So 31 is an easy one. fx is given to be 4 times sine 3x minus x. So it is made up of two functions and they are subtracted. So we need to find derivative means we need to find f prime x or d by dx of this function. So d by dx of 4 sine 3x minus d by dx of x. So two functions are there. I just distribute the derivative and 4 is a constant number. It will come out of the derivative. So d by dx of sine 3x and derivative of x with respect to itself is 1. So 4 and derivative of sine as you see in the formula sheet is cos. Now you do the derivative of 3x which is 3 minus 1. So 4 multiplied with 3 would give you 12 cos 3x minus 1. So this is the derivative of 31. 
let's do 33 so in 33 f of t is given it's a function of variable t remember that not x so you have tan cube 2t minus cosecant 4 3t okay so we will do d by dx of tan cube 2t so just distribute d by dt oh there's a mistake it is d by dt see we are so used to writing d by dx that we never write d by dt or any other variable here variable is t so it will be d by dt cosecant 4 3 t and i hope you know that d by dt means rate of change so we are changing uh, this quantity with respect to t okay now tan cube 2 t so first thing is the outer function we are going to apply here in this one now chain rule we will also apply as you see there are powers so we will also apply power rule and definitely because you have tan and cosecant so you will also apply the trigonometric ratio so as you see in a question we are applying so many concepts uh, in the same question so let's now solve further more on this and then we'll get our answer so for tan cube of 2t first the power rule so 3 tan square 2t then the derivative of tan and the derivative of tan is secant square 2t then the derivative of inside 2t which is 2 so, so see how long the calculation is then derivative of this first power rule 4 comes down power reduces by 1 3t then the derivative of cosecant so the derivative of cosecant is what it is minus first of all and it is cosecant x multiplied with cot x but here x is not there 3t is there so we will write 3t okay be careful on that now after that 3t will also be differentiated so we'll multiply by 3 let's combine and write the final step 3 multiplied with 2 would give you 6 tan square 2t multiplied with secant square 2t 4 with 3 would give you 12 cosecant cube 3t and cube with one more will give you 4 okay and negative and negative also will give you positive so you have to be very careful power increases here so 4t and then cot 3t so all of this finally you have check your calculations and this is how you do 31 and 33 let's now solve a question on question rule so here we are going to apply a mix of question rule a mix of um, our chain rule and a mix of our power rule as you see there are powers so power rule as you see there is division so div uh, division means question rule and as you see in the denominator the function is having inner function 2x outer function cosecant to the power 4 so we are going to be applying all of that so let's first apply the division rule that means the denominator cosecant 4 2x is raised to the power 2 in numerator denominator is as it is and you differentiate the numerator so you differentiate x square you get 2x then you subtract x square as it is and you do d by dx of cosecant 4 to x now i want to explain this derivative in detail and then we'll substitute here so let's find d by dx of cosecant 4 to x so there is power power rule there is inner outer function so it will be power root first cosecant power reduces by one now derivative of cosecant 2x would be uh, definitely negative cosecant 2x times cot 2x and also there is 2x so its derivative is 2 so this is 4 2s are 8 cosecant cube 2x with a negative sign because of this times again one more cosecant and one more cot so this power becomes 4 and cot 2 so now we can put this value to substitute from 1 in equation 2 what you get is 2x times cosecant for 2x minus x square times minus 8 cosecant for 2x multiplied with cot 2x so 
so be careful with your steps don't do any mistake in writing denominator as it is so now just combine this is 2x cosecant 4 2x minus minus becomes plus 8x square cosecant 4 2x multiplied with cot 2x divided by cosecant 4 2x whole square so that's your final answer Let's do some more questions. So we'll do now question 44. So here if you see there are two functions which are added. One is sine, one is cos. There is power also. So power rule will definitely be provided and applied in this question. So we take d by dx of 4 sine square 3x plus d by dx of 4 cos square 3x so over the two function we distribute now 4 comes out and derivative of sine square so first we apply power rule we are going by the chain rule 2 comes down sine 3x then derivative of sine is cos so cos 3x and there is a 3 also coming from the differentiation plus 4 times now derivative of power rule cos 3x derivative of cos is minus sin 3x times 3 now something is going to come common let's do carefully 4 multiplied with 2 is 8 8 multiplied with 3 is 24 sin 3x cos 3x then you have a negative sign 4 multiplied with 2 8 again 24 cos 3x sin 3x so if you see these are same terms with a different sign so both of them cancel and the final derivative here is 0 okay let's do one last question and i want to just tell you that with this question it's a good variety if you see this is gw given as a function of w so when you are going to do the differentiation that is you are going to find g prime of w or d by dw the variable will be w so you are going to differentiate cos and tan both using this variable so that's why this question i wanted to discuss so that you are not confused with the variable so here you are differentiating with respect to w okay similarly you are differentiating the second one also with respect to w so 2 pi w over 3 tan okay so let's do cos first what is the derivative of cos the derivative of cos is minus sine so the angle we will keep it like this 2 pi w by 3 and now we differentiate d by dw with respect to 2 pi w by 3 okay inside so first outside then inside chain rule is being applied similarly here first you differentiate outside function so you differentiate tan what you get secant square times the angle same angle i'm writing and then d by dw of the inside angle so this is the same as the previous one now look here carefully when i am differentiating with respect to w so this w and this w will cancel you will just be left with 2 pi by 3 similarly here also 2 pi by 3 so dw by dw is 1 so here now you get minus sign 2 pi w by 3 same value here you get 2 pi by 3 plus secant square as it is 2 pi w by 3 and this is 2 pi by 3 now something is common what is that 2 pi by 3 you can take it common and inside you have secant square 2 pi w by 3 minus sine 2 pi w by 3 so even though the question seemed difficult it was pretty easy we finished it in three simple steps and we just collected the like terms together so don't get scared by the question just see what is the logic that you are applying and solve it confidently so in this question we just used the chain rule one rule and it was easy to get the answer using the trigonometric derivative
In today's session of derivatives, we have covered end of term coverage part 2. Next coming up on my channel is part 3 of the video which will be based on the concept of integration and antiderivatives. So stay glued to the channel, subscribe if you haven't till now and are watching the videos and enjoying and liking them, finding them useful for your preparation of your term 3. And until then, this is Ms. Ruchika signing off from today's video. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.